I'm not supposed to be here. Here is a bay, a bed in a hospital room, multiple bed bay thing. I'm not supposed to be with her. Right now, where I am supposed to be, what the plan was, is a caravan in Northumberland with three of my closest friends, good drinks, good food, face masks, manicures, no responsibilities, no cares. And here I am, clearly not in Northumberland, right? Clearly not having a fancy cocktail. <laughs> because somebody decided that she needed to spend this weekend in hospital. This weekend, which is a weekend that I have been planning for months. For months we have been planning this. We have a WhatsApp group. I swapped weekends with Dad so that I would be off this weekend. We have been talking about what we're going to bring, what we're going to do, what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink. And really anticipated and looked forward to it. We were talking about how to sort out the driving. It's a bloody long way, only two of us drive, so we were gonna share it. All of those things. And on Thursday, it stood very clear to me that there was absolutely no way I'd be setting off on a girly weekend away this weekend. No. It's right, isn't it? It is right, yeah. And back in December, one of you, I think it was Sarah, was it you, Sarah? Asked me if I could do a vlog on how I deal with stuff when things don't go to plan. And of course I can. <laughs> See, I do get to your requests. Maybe it takes me a while, but I do get there. Yes, I wrote it down. I do. I remember everything, every vlog you guys have asked me about, I write them down. I might not get to them immediately. I do get to them eventually. And right now I have the perfect opportunity to talk about how to deal with things when they don't go to plan, right? I mean, in general, when you have kids, you have to accept that sometimes things don't go to plan. Like, they just don't when you have kids. If you have a special needs child, a complex needs child, you can almost guarantee that things aren't going to go to plan. That's a given. This is my caveat. Everything, every time I make plans, every time I promise something, my caveat is provided early and placeable. So how you cope with stuff not going to plan is down to your mindset. And your mindset can be changed. You can change your mindset, you can change your outlook, you can change how you think about situations when they arise and think about them in a way that makes it more easy to cope with them. A lot of it is cognitive behavioral therapy techniques, a lot of them is mindset or life coaching techniques, and I have been doing this for two decades. I've been using these techniques for two decades. Uh, I'm an old hand at them. I still have situations that overwhelm me and that make me very upset for various reasons. Um, I mean, I can easily say that had this happened in November, I would be a wet puddle on the floor just crying. Back in November, I was feeling horrendous. I was deep in my depression. I did not have the ability to cope. But using my mindset techniques, I have worked really hard on this depression. I'm feeling so much better mentally and emotionally. I'm really quite stable at the moment. So coping with this is not difficult right now. Okay, so <clears throat> cognitive behavioral therapy. Something happens, you react to it. Your reaction is based on you think something, you feel something, you behave. And and when this happened, on th when Ellen went into hospital on Wednesday night, and when I was sitting in hospital on Thursday, I had thoughts, I had feelings. I didn't actually have reactions because I don't react badly to these situations again, but I still had these thoughts and these feelings. I mean, obviously, at the times, other situations, I probably would have reacted. But, <clears throat> I mean, one of the things I was thinking was, well, this is bloody typical, and the feeling clearly annoyed. I felt sad. This was something that I had really been looking forward to, and it was snatched away from me a day and a half before I was supposed to go. I felt really sad. 
and I felt guilty because I felt like I was letting my friends down and I said I was going to share the driving and I was messing everybody around. Okay? These are normal thoughts and feelings in a situation like that. Like, honestly, if you don't have thoughts and feelings like that in a situation similar to this, you're probably not a very nice person. Sorry, I didn't mean to judge, but <laughs> like, come on. Come on, you're no it's normal to feel sad and disappointed in a situation like this. But I also was thinking that my daughter's needs come before anything. She is one of the most important people in my world and I will never not care for her. That's just the way it is. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, if you make plans with me, the caveat is provided that Eileen is playing ball. And I also know that my friends are amazing. And I absolutely know that they are not blaming me for having to cancel, right? They are just as disappointed and gutted as I am. What I didn't know was that they were going to cancel the whole trip because apparently if I couldn't go with them, it was no fun. And then I cried because that's just too sweet. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, of course, I could have turned that into something bad. I could have been like, oh my God, I've ruined everything for everybody. Now they can't have any fun. But equally, if they'd gone, I could be sitting here going, oh, well, they're off having fun without me. Like, you can always turn something into a bad situation. <coughs> Sadly, we humans have evolved to turn stuff into a bad situation. We have learned, our brains developed to see the negative. Negativity bias, evolutionary thing, right? We needed to remember which foods were bad. We needed to remember which animals were dangerous. And this has geared our brains towards focusing on and remember the negative. It's much harder for us to focus on and remember the positive, but we can actually retrain our brains to do that. And there are a number of techniques to use and you, I'm sure you've heard me go on about this before and I'm sure you're probably fed up with me now. Gratitude journaling. Write down three positive things that happen every day. There is a Facebook thing going on, 365 Days of Happiness, where you write something on Facebook every day. That was good that day. Works as well, but I really think, you know, I, I say at least three. At least three good things that happened in a day. Write them down. Not for a day or two, not for a week, for months, for years. Make it an ongoing practice. And you will, over time, rewrite your brain, rewire your brain to see, focus on and remember the positives. It works. There is scientific evidence that it works. And this is why I think it's such a good tool. It's so simple and it's really powerful. Then there are other techniques to use and challenging your thoughts and coming up with less negative thoughts or more positive thoughts is a very, very good one as well. It takes time. Again, all of this takes time. You need to actually pay some attention to it and some focus on it. But sit and write down what is the circumstance? What do I feel? What do I think? How do I react? and then challenge the thought and see if you can come up with a better thought pattern because ultimately all of your feelings derive from what you're thinking. And if you can come up with a different way of thinking about the situation, your feeling will change about it. So the circumstance is, Eileen's in hospital on a weekend that I should be away. Thoughts, bloody typical, uh, she did this on purpose, now I can't go, I've let everybody down. Feelings, annoyance, sadness, guilt. And then you may react in certain ways because of it. Like I could have been a grumpy cow when I came into hospital and been snappy at the hospital staff and unpleasant to everybody and be kind of hard and forceful in my care of Eileen. Like all of those things are possible when you're annoyed and when you're all up in your own head. I didn't because this didn't bother me that much but then as I say I have been using these techniques for a very very long time and I have good practice in Eileen's life of using these techniques but you know it, it's, it's quite possible that I could have reacted that way it would have been fairly acceptable and natural if I had reacted that way and that's when you can then start to challenge these thoughts did she do this on purpose now really 
did she sit down and think a few weeks ago, aha, my mum's got a trip coming up, I know, I want to catch this cold that's going around, and then I'm going to sit with it in my body for a couple of weeks until it's built up to a point where I have a proper infection and I'm going to go into spiral of seizures and I'm going to time it just right. Did she really? Of course not. Like, of course not. She is a rat bag. And I think she's capable of planning and messing me around a lot more than people think. But no, I do not think she did this on purpose. Another good thought to challenge with is, okay, but let's say you could have got. Let's say that your parents lived in the UK and could have looked after Alice and dad could have been with Ellie and you could have gone. Would you? No. No, of course I wouldn't have gone. Not when Eileen's ill. Like, that does that happen. I don't go away. I'm not going to be seven, eight hours drive away from my daughter when she is poorly. Uh -uh. Not a chance. <laughs> Do I look comfortable here? I am going to get through this vlog. I am. I am. Promise. I have no idea where I was. I think I was talking about challenging thoughts and coming up with a more positive thought pattern or a more helpful thought pattern. I think that's where I was. I hope I managed to get through all of that. Um, yeah, I mean the situation where my friends um, cancelled the whole trip and I could easily have gone, oh my god, I've ruined everything for everyone. Have I though? Is that really the case? Is that really what they did? No, my the thought that I immediately went to is they really wanted to do this with me, that was important to them, and it's so amazing. And I feel so loved, and I feel so appreciated. And that is probably a much more true thought, and it's definitely closer to what actually happened. You know, they didn't cancel it because they felt they had to, or they should, or anything they did because they wanted to. Um, and this is what I mean about challenging thoughts. When doing this kind of thought work, this kind of cognitive behavioural therapy work, these techniques, it can be very helpful to have somebody to do it with, like having a mindset coach or having a therapist or a, an accountability buddy, because it's very easy when you start challenging your own thoughts that you challenge them in a way that perhaps isn't the most helpful. So when I was really depressed, um, and feeling quite bad about myself and about everything my the first sort of helpful thought that I tried was oh just snap out of it snap out of it and stop being so annoying that wasn't very helpful snap out of it is never helpful oh just stop feeling so crap about yourself you stupid woman not very helpful and I really was there that's how I used to think when I thought I was thinking in a better way to get my mindset in a better place and I really wasn't this takes time it takes practice it you know it's not it's not a quick fix it takes a lot of hard work and probably when you don't necessarily want to put in a lot of hard work I mean we've talked about this when it comes to depressions as well I've said you know when you are feeling you're absolutely worse when you do not have resources you have to work on wanting to feel better right uh, and the whole with sort of minds changing your mindset kind of thing you hopefully you're not that you know in the depth of depression when you do it but you might be I, I was there a few months ago um, you have to want to put in that work and effort and it takes time and your brain is going to resist you because it's quite comfortable in the old uh, grooves that it's been playing all your life it likes those it likes that melody and then you're kind of going and changing the record and it's like no 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 I don't want this I made my child jump, I'm so sorry. She's very tired, she wants to have a nap. Right, your brain is going to resist you, your brain is going to tell you off, um, and you have to, have to, you don't have to do anything. You can ignore me, completely ignore any of my advice. You don't have to do anything, but if you want to do this, you kind of keep, need to keep going even when your brain is resisting you. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. I hope I make some form of sense with all of this and I hope Sarah that this is answering your question of how to cope with stuff when shit don't go your way. Oh well let's see if I can edit all of this into some form of coherence. I'm not sure I can. Oh. Well I'm gonna leave Ellen to sleep I'm gonna sit down and edit a vlog obviously apparently. 
really interested in all of your thoughts as always really interested in all of your vlog requests as always and uh, yeah if you have any more tips and tricks to share in terms of dealing with unexpected shit then then share it thank you so much for watching see you very soon bye